In video three of this series, we talked about how to add HTTPS sites to our server, but there's more we can do to improve HTTPS performance and security, and we're gonna look at that in this video. We'll also look at how we can minimize risks from other types of attacks, such as XSS, clickjacking, and mime sniffing. If you'd find it easier to see the whole Nginx configuration at once, feel free to go to the last chapter in the written version of this guide to download the complete Nginx configuration kit. Now, we will talk about that in the final video, of this series. First, let's talk about SSL hardening. Although your site's configured to only handle HTTPS traffic, it still allows clients to attempt to connect via HTTP. What we're gonna do is add the strict transport security header to the server response to make sure that any future connections enforce HTTPS. If you wanna get a deeper understanding of the strict transport security header, we've linked to an article by Scott Helm in the written version of this guide. If you haven't already, make sure you SSH into your server, and then we're gonna open up the main Nginx configuration file sudo nano ect nginx nginx conf we need to add a directive to this htt block let's head over to the written version of the guide i'll copy this directive right here and we'll paste it in now you might be wondering why we set up a 301 redirect to go from http to https when we originally set up the site configuration file well that's because unfortunately this header right here is not supported by ie10 and below Let's exit and save. Let's go ahead and test our configuration file here. sudo nginx dash t. Great, looks like we're looking good. Let's go ahead and restart. sudo service nginx reload. Now's a good time to check out the SSL Labs SSL server test. And if you go ahead and enter in your host name right here, hit the submit button, you should receive an A plus grade. Not bad. Next, let's talk about SSL performance. HTTPS connections take a lot more resources than a regular HTTP connection. This is due to the additional handshake procedure that's required when establishing a secure connection. However, it is possible to cache the SSL session, which will avoid the SSL handshake altogether for subsequent connections. Just remember that security is the name of the game, so you want clients to re-authenticate often. A happy medium of 10 minutes is usually a good starting point. Let's load up our main Nginx configuration file one more time. And once again, we're gonna be adding some directives to the HTTP block. Heading over to the written version of the guide and I'll just copy them right here. I'm gonna go ahead and add them below the strict transport security header. And why don't I actually relabel this section SSL hardening. Great, let's save and exit. And once again, we wanna test our configuration before restarting. sudo Nginx dash T. And it says the configuration file is okay, so we are ready to restart. I'll just hit the up arrow a few times until I find that restart command and go ahead and restart Nginx. Next, let's talk about cross-site scripting. Now, the most effective way to deal with cross-site scripting is to ensure that we've correctly validated and sanitized all user input in our code, including things inside of the WordPress admin area. But most input validation and sanitation is out of your control when you consider third-party plugins and themes. We can still reduce the risk of a cross-site scripting attack by configuring Nginx to provide a few additional response headers. Let's assume an attacker has managed to embed a malicious JavaScript file into the source code of your site, maybe through a comment form or something similar. By default, the browser will unknowingly load this external file and allow its contents to execute. That's why we're gonna create a content security policy, which is a whitelist of sources that are approved to load assets like JavaScript, CSS, and so forth. If the script isn't on the approved list, it doesn't get loaded. Creating a content security policy can require some trial and error, and you do need to be careful so you don't accidentally block assets that need to be loaded by Google or other third-party vendors. We're gonna start with a sample policy that will allow our current Domain, as well as a few sources like Google and WordPress. We'll create the general policy in a global configuration file, and we can also override it on a site per site basis as needed. Once again, we're gonna open up the Nginx configuration file, and we're gonna go down to the HTTP block again, and back over to the written version of the guide. We're gonna grab this code right here. We'll go ahead and paste this in. Now you may have picked up on the fact that this only deals with external assets, but what about inline scripts? There are two ways you can handle this. You can completely disable inline scripts by removing unsafe-inline and unsafe-eval from the content security policy. However, this approach can break some third-party plugins and themes, so you need to be careful. 
The second way you can do this is by enabling x-xss protection, which will instruct the browser to filter through user input and ensure suspicious code is an output directly to HTML. Now, this is not bulletproof, but it is a relatively simple countermeasure to implement. Head over to the written version of this guide, and we're going to grab this directive right here. We'll copy it. Back over to our config file, we'll go right below our content security policy and paste it in. These headers are no replacement for correct validation or sanitation, but they do offer another very strong line of defense against common cross-site scripting attacks. Only installing high-quality plugins and themes from trusted sources is your best and first line of defense. Next, let's talk about clickjacking. Clickjacking is an attack which fools the user into performing an action which they didn't intend to do. It's commonly achieved through the use of iframes. In the written version of this guide, we'll link to an article by Troy Hunt that has a thorough explanation of clickjacking. The most effective way to combat clickjacking is to completely disable frame embedding from third-party domains. To do this, we're going to add another directive. Back over to the written version of the guide under the clickjacking header. Here's the directive. Let's copy it. And we'll paste it right below our last cross-site scripting protection. This is going to prevent all external domains from embedding your site directly onto their own through the use of an iframe tag. Next, let's talk about mime sniffing. Mime sniffing can expose your site to attacks such as drive-by downloads. The cross content type options header counters this threat by ensuring only mime types provided by the server are honored. There's a link to an article by Microsoft in the written version of this guide, which explains mime sniffing in detail. We have another header to add to disable mime sniffing. Let's head over to the written version of the guide under mime sniffing. Here it is. Let's copy this and we'll paste it in. The next header to talk about is the referrer policy header. This allows you to control which information is included in the referrer header when navigating from pages on your site. While the referrer information can be useful, there are cases where you may not want the full URL passed to the destination server. For example, when you're navigating away from private content like a membership site. In fact, since WordPress 4.9, any request from WordPress's dashboard will automatically send a blank referrer header to any external destination. This makes it impossible to track requests when navigating away from your site inside of the WordPress dashboard, which helps to prevent broadcasting the fact that your site is running WordPress and passing on your slash WP admin to external domains. We can take this a step further by restricting the refer information for all pages on our site, not just the WordPress dashboard. A common approach to this is to pass only the domain to the destination server. So instead of seeing myawesomesite.com slash top secret URL, you would just see myawesomesite.com. We can achieve this by adding a referrer policy. Let's go ahead and do that over in the written version of this guide. Here's the referrer policy. We're going to copy and paste this and add it to our config file. Now, there is a full list of policies over at MDN, so you can check that out if you want to know more. That's all of the suggested security headers that we implement. You can save and close your config file by pressing Control X, Y to save, and return. Once again, we want to check our configuration file for errors, and everything is OK. We will reload Nginx. Now, after reloading your site, you might see a few console errors related to external assets. Go ahead and right click, hit Inspect navigate over to the console, and you can see, sure enough, I do have a few errors. Now we just need to go and edit our content security policy as necessary. You can confirm the status of your site's security headers using securityheaders.io, which is an excellent free resource from Scott Helm. This in conjunction with the SSL server test should give you a good insight into your site security. Let's go ahead and run a test now. Hit scan. As you can see, I got an A on my report card. That concludes this video. In the next video, we'll move a WordPress website from one server to another with minimal downtime. I'll see you there.